Ooh. All right. Uh, I think we are live here. I think we are good to go with our incredible set of panelists here. Uh, I am sharing my screen now, I believe. I can close my mini chat here. Welcome everyone to the webinar. We're going to get started in uh, a few minutes. Um, but for, uh, for now, I just wanted to come on and say hello. Welcome you guys here. We have three of the highest level e-commerce people that I know uh, with uh, Nick Shackelford, Muhammad Ali Agel, and Greta Van Riel. We're here to discuss how to level up and execute eight-figure e-commerce. Um, this is our second webinar uh, in, a, in a series that we're doing, and I'm super happy to have everyone here. So if you guys know people that are uh, going to join us, make sure you ping them and say, get on here, because we're going to be uh, giving away some awesome prizes. We're going to be doing some Q&A at the end. Uh, and uh, we got a lot of value to be giving away. Uh, do you guys want to say a quick hello? Yeah, definitely. Um, I am. It's been a long trip. So we we obviously had our event in Barcelona, which was fantastic. A lot of really good people we got to meet. Uh, we were on stage, brought up, brought down the house. It was cool to see everybody just diving into e-commerce. Right now, people are. It's so exciting, right? So they're learning about the drop shipping, they're learning about building a business, something that's bigger than you, and being able to kind of talk about what we've been doing, me specifically, for a couple of years, like rock my world. So I'm, I'm in Southern California. Uh, I got back last week, and I'm just kind of like feeling everything, getting back into the groove of how to execute and looking through my portfolio of brands, and it's just so much learning to, as soon as you share, you come back with all new fresh ideas, especially with Mo and I've been able to talk about raising my AOV and I'm taking it to all my clients and now I'm trying to see how we can hack away at the CRM. So it's been really interesting meeting people. Nice. Hello everyone. Hello, hello. Thank you, Nick. That was, man, that was amazing. I don't know, brother, how you went so fast to the US. I'm unfortunately still on vacation. I'm in Rome right now. I'm actually in my hotel room, so you can see the bed right there with the Roman colors. Uh, for people watching, can you type one in the chat box if you actually can hear us and see us and see the screen? One oh. in the chat box if you guys can see that. One, enter. Gary Cunningham Just is here. Everyone, Sarver is back for a second helping of oh, goodness. Nice. I think they can all hear us. That's good. We look good, says Angela. Angela's always so kind. <laughs> Thanks, Angela. Oh, guys, Greta here. Uh, sorry that I don't have any visual going on. I'm actually, I'm still away on vacation as well at the moment. I'm in Capri in Italy, which is a remote island off the coast of, well, off the Amalfi Coast. Uh, so I'm just going to be recording uh, from here with audio only, sorry. So you don't get to see my sunburnt face. So that's the story with Greta. Um, where's up? Before we get started here, we're gonna do. We're gonna get started in about uh, in about five minutes, five six minutes. Um, so where? Where? Shout out on the chat where you guys are from. Uh, we know we have uh, a few people back from the first webinar. Angela misses Greta's face. That's nice. Uh, we got uh, we got oh. Ali from Sweden. We got David Yu from China. Where else? Hamburg. Oh, look, we're truly international. Nice. And he is from uh, from Turkey. Very cool. Yeah, I know India. We uh, I know Sarver. We talked about uh, cricket yesterday. Uh, oh, Dylan Benson here from Victoria, British Columbia. How's it going, Dylan? Good to good to have you on here. Uh, oh, Singapore, huge e-commerce mecca. Very cool. Nick from Serbia here. Very nice. So yeah. So uh, like I say, we got lots to cover here. Uh, about to make some announcements about some prizes that we're going to be giving away live on the webinar. We, it's funny, I, uh, in preparation for this, I mean, if you guys watched the um, the Bill O'Reilly clip of like when he like messes up on on the on his new show and he screams about doing it live. That's how I always feel when we're when we're going into these situations because because uh, we're doing it live, baby. That's uh, that's the Russell Brunson way. That's that's the way that I'm excited about too. So we've got 72 uh, attendees, which is pretty sweet. We're gonna have more uh, coming and joining. David, uh, David, you says you look tired, Mo. How do you feel? <laughs> it's been three or four days. I'm not used to that uh, physical energy. I miss my laptop, man. I miss sitting my butt down and just working. But uh, I'm good. I'm good. We gotta be uh, having a lot of fun. 
It's going to be a sick webinar, a lot of value to be given. And uh, I'm more than excited, man, to be here. The only thing is, in this country, they don't give you normal water. They give you carbonated water. And I have been trying to gasp that for the past half an hour. But we have been on the webinar and there is no water. So I'm trying just to gasp this. Well, we got Progress in the house. Progress is one of my favorite people I've met in Barcelona. One of the coolest names I've oh, ever Oh, man, remember. that dude. You guys met Progress? Dude, he's from New York, man. I met that guy. He's awesome. Nice. New York yeah, he's a sneakerhead. He was house. telling me all about how to how to take less L's in the sneaker game, uh, and uh, and so it was it was very valuable for me. Uh, yeah, God bless you too, Progress. Um, nice. Okay. Well, we're gonna get going here. So if you guys, uh, if you're if you're watching this webinar, we're gonna the last one went pretty long, and and we're gonna go we're gonna try to tighten this one up a little bit. We have three uh, people on this one versus the two on the last one. But if you stick around to the end, we're gonna be answering your questions. Uh, answering your questions about this collaboration that we're working on, asking your questions about the specific content that uh, we reveal in this in this uh, in this webinar. So make sure that you stick around to the end to get those questions answered. Um, and for now, close your other windows. Close your if you got if you got Slack open, you got other things. Just I, we want you to focus on this webinar. We really think we're giving away some high value stuff here that can help you uh, grow a, a seriously scalable e-commerce business. So make sure that this is what you're focused on right now. This is if you're into e-commerce, if you if you're if you have a store and you want to know how to take it to the next level, this is what you need to be focused on right now, probably more than anything else uh, in your world. So make sure that you are focused here. We are 10:05 now. Um, so we're just gonna just wait a little few more people jump on here before we kick it off uh, yeah this uh, there is a replay Paul of part one which I can link you to or uh, I, can, I can send you the, the link to it it's on YouTube we have it on Facebook as well you can catch part one um, previously um, but basically yeah so the idea with this with this project is that we wanted to, to break the e-commerce journey down into six component parts we covered the first three major parts of it uh, in the last webinar, which were uh, your startup strategy, your Facebook ads, and your analytics so that you can understand your numbers, you can drive new customers, and you can set up a sort of longer term strategy that allows you to scale. Uh, we covered that um, previously, and then we got three new uh, keys that we're covering with our all-stars right now. Um, so yeah, let's see, what else, what, what other comments we got here? Um, Closing Dropify, no fulfilling today. Connor, I like it. I like it. Don't even actually. If you if you can make sales today, you should probably still focus on that. Uh, but uh, just like just say no to sales for for the next hour and a half. That's probably bad advice. I don't think they would recommend that. Um, nice. Okay, people are excited about the the rumors of the hats. Okay, well I think we should get going now. I think people will be joining us in process uh, as we go. So welcome to All Star E-Commerce, the webinar part two, leveling up, executing eight figure e-commerce. So today, as you guys know, if you've been around since the intro, we've got Nick and Greta and Mo, uh, three high level e-commerce operators who all have specific expertise in certain parts of the game. And uh, we're here to talk about, about these, this level of expertise. Um, so you guys can see my screen too, right? You see, our, you see the three of us and you see my screen. Nice, I think, you, I think you're all good with that, okay. So slide two, here we go. Okay, so we just came back from e-commerce mastery live. This was the third live event that I put on in the past year, which was crazy. Uh, this was the best of them yet. We did uh, two Facebook mastery lives last year in Berlin and then in Bangkok, and then we really honed in on e-commerce uh, for this for this event because uh, basically in my in my year of, of of building this business of iStack training, the people that I met who were the most sort of professionally on fire, the people that I wanted to work with most were the people doing e-commerce. Uh, at one level or at the other, so so that's really what we doubled down on that. And Facebook, you know, building a brand on Facebook with the name Facebook in it is a little bit of a of a prickly pear right now, a little bit of a maybe not the best idea. So that's why we, another reason that we doubled down on e-commerce. Um, but uh, Nick and Greta and Mo both blew everyone away there. We had 400 people uh, at the event. It was one of the most beautiful facilities I'd ever been in, and uh, it was a, a part of the larger uh, affiliate world Europe event. That was a lot of fun to be a part of as well. I was the MC for that event. So I was essentially on stage for eight hours uh, every day, which was a lot. Uh, I, I should show a picture of me of sleeping in between some of, some of the presentations because uh, it, was, it was a lot of work, but it was so rewarding, so much fun. Over the past month, we have been putting out a ton of valuable e-commerce content, basically. 
Um, we started by uh, surveying over 500 um, e-commerce experts, people who I self-identified as people that were running e-commerce stores full-time. We got 500 responses. Uh, and we, it was a 50 question survey and we produced three like high level infographics about the strategies, the tactics, you know, how that they were, how that they were fulfilling their offers, what kind of products they were selling, uh, what kind of advertising methods they used. We created three expert benchmark infographics that are all available through our Facebook group. We created two incredibly badass case studies with Nick and Greta. Uh, as you can see there about how Nick uh, made Forex ROI spending a million dollars in 40 days and how Greta made $232,000 in a single minute. Uh, which uh, both fully amazing e-commerce stories and these and they're filled with value start to finish how they executed how they how they accomplished these amazing feats so if you haven't gr grabbed those uh, those case studies make sure you do we also did an interview series with all six of our uh, all-stars which which are also all available via our Facebook group and then we produced a six-part uh, e-commerce free course that covers each aspect of the e-commerce journey the key learning that you need to take from each from all six of our all-stars and these are all available on istack.link slash secrets. So if you haven't opted into that, if you're just coming to the webinar and you haven't gotten any of this other content, make sure you go to istack.link slash secrets. Uh, you'll also be, have an ability then to join our exclusive Facebook group. And then all of the uh, all of that uh, that valuable content is available in the units tab. If you go to units within e-commerce all-star secrets, you'll be able to get all that content. So make sure uh, that you go there, check it out. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's a, a ton of value for you guys. So. Uh, on to this webinar, leveling up with Nick, Greta, and Mo. Okay, so here's the one thing. This is the one thing I need you to believe by the end of this webinar, uh, if for me to be successful, you know. Uh, so the best way for you to gain financial leverage in your life is by creating value for consumers, selling physical goods online, AKA white hat e-commerce. So building long-term sustainable e-commerce businesses, selling physical products online is gonna be the best way for you to gain physical, you know, financial leverage in your life, gain control of your life. And, uh, you know, whether you're doing it already or you haven't started yet, um, devoting yourself to this cause, we're going to show you some statistics in a little bit, uh, is going to be your best bet for, for maintaining control of your own life, which is something that I think a lot of people struggle with. I was just, I was looking at a statistic yesterday that showed like the median, the median income from the seventies, the median income from currently today was essentially the same when you adjust for inflation. Uh, you know, people, if, if you're relying on the current corporate education, governmental system uh, providing for you and your family, uh, it's, it's a tough slog and it's, and it, it, it can be, it, it can be like with the way that inflation is going, um, you know, relying on other people to make your life for you is going to be difficult and e-commerce provides you this incredible opportunity to go out there and, and forge your own path and, and, and uncap your earnings essentially, which is what we're all about here with this e-commerce project. So after this webinar, you will have the three advanced skill sets that can practically take your six or seven business, six or seven figure e-commerce business to eight figures and beyond. Uh, and so those are just, those are going to be the highlights, the key things you need to know about each of these areas that we've, we've sort of identified. And then beyond that, there's something bigger, which is the three mindsets about these individual topics that you have to dismantle if you really want to scale your business. So these are key things that you need to sort of shift your mind about if you want to have massive success with e-commerce. And then as a bonus, I'm going to give away my own strategic blueprint for how to create high performance, passion based uh, brands and scale them to seven figures, which is something that I've done with ISAC training just over the past year. Uh, and you're going to have an understanding of how to align your e-commerce business with the current trends to take advantage of the limitless future of quality e-commerce. So this is what you're all about. This is what you're here for. And this is what we're going to deliver. So we did. A, we So basically with this e-commerce journey, we broke it down people into three parts. We kind of feel like there's three people that we're talking to, three kinds of people, three customer avatars. So first we've got dreamers. These are people who know that the e-commerce phenomenon is massive. They know enough, they've seen courses, they've seen the screenshots, they know that there's there's all this potential. Maybe they have some ideas about what to build, how to do it, but they haven't taken action yet. Uh, so this webinar is a little bit for these people. It's gonna give you some inspiration to show you, you know, the, the heights you can achieve essentially uh, when, when you're operating at the level of our guests here. Castaway, these are people uh, who have tried e-commerce. They've, they've tried some stores. They've done probably like a low-level implementation of e-commerce. They were Maybe they sold a few products. Maybe they sold a lot of products, but they weren't able to sustain. They weren't able to make it something long-term that they could bank on and build around. Um, and so, so this webinar will definitely help those people. Uh, so we covered in our first webinar, e-com startup strategy, Facebook ads, and Google Analytics with Nick Peroni, Ben Malal, and Dimitri Skiatis. We covered the key things you need to know about each of those, those areas for people who are starting out. 
Uh, and then today we're covering the advanced tactics for eight-figure e-commerce. So we think we're going to have more. I know we have some beginners on here as well, but we're thinking we're going to have a few more people who are actually running e-commerce businesses or have tried e-commerce businesses, castaways in the past. Uh, I, I'm super excited that I found a dabbing emoji uh, for the expert, all those experts out there. So you can self-identify all of you as dabbing emojis. Forgive me for that. So today we've got Mo. Uh, well, we'll go in order, I think, because first we have Nick Shackelford covering not just customer acquisition, but customer retention and frequency. The idea of being able to bring customers back again and again to your store at scale. Then we've got Greta Van Riel, who's one of the foremost experts on influencer marketing and branding. She's going to be doing a talk on, on how important it is to have a brand if you want to get to that next level. Uh, and then we've got Muhammad Ali Aguil, who's all about finding ways to pay more uh, for customers than his competition and because he who pays the most for customers wins he's going to talk a little bit about the tactics that you can align with in order to accomplish that and then you stick around here's here's why you want to stick around there's a there's a there's a couple strong reasons you want to stick around one you're going to get my blueprint for how i've scaled the, um, uh, the brand of iStack training to seven figures in a year and i'm going to give you the, little, the blueprint for how i did that uh, and if you stick around we're also going to have questions Q&A with all three uh, of the All-Stars as well as myself here to answer any questions you have about our project or, or the topics that we're covering. Uh, and then we're also going to be giving away $5,000 in bonus value awarded for those who stick around to the end and take action. This is the big one too. How many people? We've got about 100 people on right now. If you stick around to the end, the bitter end, we're going to send you one of these dope iStack training lids. Uh, custom, custom made, uh, limited edition iStack training hats. They're going to be the first uh, hats off of our, our presses in our new merch store that we're, that we're building right now. Um, so it's going to take a little bit. You're not going to get them right away, but if you stick around, you, I promise you, you will get one of these dope hats. We all, we have them in black and in white uh, that we've sort of like cribbed the Supreme logo a little bit here. Uh, don't tell them, uh, but our black ones are, are pretty dope as well. So if you stick around to the end, we'll be providing one of those. So you might be wondering if you don't know who I am, who is this dick? Uh, well, I'm Eric Dick, first of all. Uh, I'm CEO of iStack Training. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm going to be making dick jokes throughout because uh, I can't help it. I'm a dad. I'm an uncle. I have to. It's in my blood. Uh, I am CEO of iStack Training. I started iStack Training about a year ago. Um, we create courses, events, community, masterminds. We've been, uh, we've been doing a lot. We produced uh, about 14 courses last year. We did three live events, uh, two masterminds. And it's been the most like professionally fulfilling uh, couple years of my life here. I'm a 12 year veteran of performance marketing. So I've seen, uh, I've done affiliate marketing, I've done email marketing, I've built my own startups, I've done install marketing, I've done e-commerce, I've, I've done all of these things. Uh, and, and I can tell you that I've seen all these trends come and go. And, and so when I tell you that e-commerce is the opportunity of our generation, I have a lot of backup to, to tell you why and to, and to understand. I've seen so many other um, things happen in the digital marketing space, and I've never been as excited about anything as I am about e-commerce. I have a podcast called The Robust Marketer. I've interviewed everyone on this uh, panel here. I've, interviewed, I've done about 50 interviews with people, which is a huge part of my research strategy, don't tell anyone, uh, about, about how to grow my own business, which has been a huge, huge asset to me. My superpower is bringing people together uh, to share valuable knowledge and advance your skills to change lives. And speaking of changing lives, if you look at these pictures of me here, uh, if you look at the top left, through the right, through the bottom, when I say that e-commerce and performance marketing is transformational, look, I've lost like 25 pounds just by hustling and grinding here, uh, you know, doing webinars, launching courses, speaking at live events, also doing keto and intermittent fasting. Uh, lazy keto, I will tell you, because I'm, I'm still drinking beers. But anyways, lost about 20 pounds, so I tell you this stuff is transformational, I mean it. Um, iStack Training, we are a part of the family of Affiliate World and Stack That Money, which is a, a, an internet marketing forum. We're basically really uh, well known for producing quality content, providing value to our audience. We, our main mission is to, is to bring together the talented, high-level speakers and practitioners that we meet at Affiliate World conferences uh, and then merge them with the communities that we create online for performance marketers uh, on STM and other amazing online communities. Uh, so what is iStack Training? The thing you need to know about us is we're not a guru. Uh, we don't work with gurus. We only work with high practicing marketers who are actually like doing these things today in the field. We are, and we're a platform that connects them with customers and people who want to learn these skills. It's, it's a subtle difference. You know, I'm not a guru. I'm not uh, necessarily, uh, you know, none of the people that we work with are gurus. We make sure that the people that we work with are making more money practicing their marketing skills in the actual field that, they're, that they talk about rather than selling their information. Uh, and this is a way that we can maintain that we're always providing like powerful information, valuable information that's working today uh, and not just stuff that people are selling 
um, you know, in, in a way that may not be applicable. The other thing we believe in is the power of performance marketing. Performance marketing is the ability to, to earn more from your marketing efforts than you spend and to track that process all the way through. And I believe that if you can harness the incredible power of performance marketing, it's one of the best like, what ways you can make your life awesome professionally, financially, and personally uh, with the people that you meet while you're, while you're on this journey. Uh, okay, so let's talk about the big opportunity here with e-commerce. Okay, so e-commerce in 2017 was a three trillion dollar industry, which is just a massive, massive industry. And if you think about it, it's only getting bigger. More people are coming online every day. Uh, more people are getting comfortable with buying things online every day. So this number is only going up massively. Uh, but if you look at the percentages of things that are actually being sold online, if you look at the things that people normally sell with e-commerce businesses in our world, retail sales, CPG goods, these percentages, they're just tiny, tiny fractions of the overall e-commerce industry. So there's still so much room to grow. So not only is the whole industry growing at an incredible pace, your spot, your ability to sell retail goods, your ability to sell consumer packaged goods, so like things you buy at grocery stores, is just exponential. So you have 1% of all CPG goods sold online right now. Over the next 10 years, that number is going to grow exponentially. And if you position yourself well and you understand that the power of e-commerce and performance marketing, you're going to be in an amazing position to benefit from that. If you look at the total size of the global advertising industry, which is one of the fastest growing industries in the world, uh, it's a $600 billion industry, $580 billion industry. And if you look at the size of that, that's occupied by what we call performance marketing, which is this kind of marketing that you're not, it's not brand dollars being spent across multiple channels on, uh, you know, billboards and radio and television. This is marketing that is directly attributable to your bottom line marketing, where you can actually see you spent this much and you earned this much in conversions and within that world there are so many tactics that have evolved that our, our speakers here are complete experts at that I'm an expert at and, and if you can harness the power of performance marketing and you can ride the, tr the growing trends of e-commerce and the growing trends of performance marketing you're going to put yourself in an incredible position for personal and financial growth which is what we're here to talk about so the total percentage share of performance marketing is only is under 10 percent right now and there's no reason that it shouldn't be at 50 60 70 80 percent and if you understand these tactics you're going to be in a good position so the exponential opportunity is when you combine the e-commerce trends with the performance marketing trends uh, and that equals the opportunity of your lifetime. And if you uh, talk to Mo and Shaq and Greta here, these people are all on the cutting edge of this. They've all operated since the very beginning uh, with that mindset of performance marketing, combining with e-commerce. How are things going for you guys? Right now? Yeah, right now. In really? general, you're with your profession. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ranching where I came from was playing soccer and kicking a ball. Like, I, I much rather enjoy my life impacting people financially, right? Like I was impacting them thinking I was impacting them by playing beautiful soccer, but no, this is much more rewarding to be able to assist solo entrepreneurs or, or just eight and nine figure businesses on how to run Facebook traffic, right? Or how to understand the customer journey and remarketing and retention focus, like all these tactics of People just jumping into the game, they don't even get to think about like what they have to do once they're in the game. Like they're here, they're like, yes, we're here, time to execute. Well, hey, you're here. Now we have to move forward. Like, how do you stay here? How do you build to sell? Like, that's my main focus. I work with entrepreneurs and brands that are building to sell, right? So their thought process is a lot different rather than just like acquire, acquire. They're all going, okay, how do we acquire and how we move into multiple channels? From the channels, how we get these consumers back to keep buying from me. So then, then we can sell a, a nice big asset. Nice. All right. Well, we'll get more into that in a little bit. We'll let Mo and Greta chime in on other things in the future. I, I, I promise. Okay. So here's here's the thing. A lot of you guys are in this the scrappy startup mindset, which I think is, you know, we advocate this. We really advocate. You know, when you're jumping into the game, we think there's a ton of value in jumping in in the lowest barrier to entry format. So right now. Everyone knows about the drop shipping phenomenon. You know that you can combine Shopify with Oberlo with AliExpress and you can start flipping products uh, for a margin using Facebook ads. This is something that's sort of like a big thing. A lot of people talk about there's a lot of drop shipping courses out there. There's a lot of blueprints for how to do this effectively. Um, you get hit with ads by it all the time. And, and it is a, a strong way to get in the game. And I would imagine not everyone on our panel, but I'm sure some of the people on our panel have experimented with this and have run this in the past. Um, and it is still possible to make this model work. It, it's, 
it's, it's something that you can jump in, you can still get it done. Uh, but, but the key is, this this is what this is what I really want to talk about is the e-commerce ascension mindset, which is even if you start that way, you, what you need to be doing is looking along the way for ways that you can improve that. So if you look at your Shopify store, so 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 basically you're you're running a Shopify store, you've got AliExpress, okay, you've got a winning product, then what do you do? Well, maybe you contact that seller on Alibaba and you go and you try to find a direct deal with them so that you can improve on the shipping times. Maybe once you have that product you create a click funnel for it so that instead of just selling it on Shopify, you're building a multi-stage funnel that allows you to focus on selling that product at scale more. Maybe if it goes really well, you look at creating your own private label from that product. You, you basically build a brand around that particular product. The next stage is like, okay, and you've, you've, you've proven some things out. You've used Google Analytics to tell your data. Uh, up here, you've, um, you've got click funnels going. Maybe you want to hard code a funnel so you can improve the loading times of your page. You know, you're always looking for ways that you can improve. After you've you've built out your um, your AliExpress um, your AliExpress relationship with someone on Alibaba for a direct seller who can improve shipping times. Maybe you want to look at custom warehousing and, and fulfillment options. Uh, and then maybe once you've had a private label, you want to build a legit brand, basically. And then when it comes to marketing, it's not just Facebook ads. You know, Nick was just talking about this right before. He's like, any business uh, that runs on a single traffic source in the past would be in a lot of trouble. Uh, but it's like so many, 90% of the people in this industry are building businesses solely on the back of, of Facebook ads. And we think it's really important that you integrate a, a, a cohesive, like full, fully fleshed out marketing funnel that includes email marketing, Facebook ads, uh, messenger marketing, influencer marketing, and Instagram, and then tying it all together with high level data systems like we can talk a little bit about with Glue. Um, so you can see we're getting a little bit more advanced than, than like, you know, in our previous webinar, we talked mainly about Shopify over low and AliExpress. With this one, we're talking a little bit more about this e-commerce ascension mindset and how, you know, it's fine to get in the game in the lowest barrier entry format, but you should always be looking for ways that you can improve your process so that you can scale, create more sustainability and more scalability in the long run, uh, which is the game that we're all about here with iStack Training and each of our, our, our all-stars businesses here. Um, so yeah, so basically by, by looking for ways to find, to improve your customer experience, building a long-term brand and provide a reason for customers to buy again and again, or even champion your brand, you put yourself in the best position to align with the massive performance marketing and e-commerce trends. So this is how you align yourself with these trends that we're talking about. This, if you want to create a CPG brand and you want to lead that revolution of the 99% of products that are going to be bought online in the next uh, in the next five to 10 years, once drone delivery becomes a thing and you literally are like, I need a bag of milk and a drone will come and drop a bag of milk and you've run a performance marketing campaign for that bag of milk. And I just realized that nobody on this webinar probably knows what a bag of milk is because no one else is Canadian. That's only something we have in Canada. <laughs> Mo gets it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ah, oh. uh, shit. I just outed myself as a Canadian. I said out, so I did the same thing. Okay. So you guys know the e-commerce lifestyle. You know why people do this. You know it gives freedom. You know Mo and Greta are operating their businesses right now from the far flung corners of the earth. You know Nick probably drives a Ferrari, Lamborghini, something, uh, just like my man Jared gets here. You know you have the ability for uh, disposable income. I was just watching Mo's live uh, uh, Instagram post where he was trying to convince himself not to buy things as he's walking by all these these boutique shops in in, uh, in France that are or Italy, but he's, he's doing well with that. The coolest thing for me, I, I you know, I, I'm running a, a company here. I have a certain amount of freedom. I get to travel around, go around the world. I'm making some really good money, uh, but I love being part of this communi community that's dedicated to ascension, that's dedicated to improving themselves, improving their businesses, living lives on their own terms. It's this, it's this sort of community, because these people also love having good times, and you just, when you get in a place, in a room with all these people, you just have so much in common right away that you create fast friendships. And, and friendships and those kinds of relationships are, are super important to me. Uh, and they help me build meaning around my life, uh, which is even more important to me in some ways than money and freedom. It's, it's to feel like I'm in control of my life and authoring my life, which is a big thing for me. Uh, okay, so we, in part one, we covered the three keys to starting up successful e-commerce stores, which is basically the, the e-commerce startup strategy mindset. 
uh, the importance of creative and specifically uh, and its role to your Facebook ads. Uh, and then the key metrics and, uh, and Google Analytics that allow you to monitor how your store is performing and how to basically segment your audience and, and market to them uh, effectively. Uh, so we covered those three things in the first part of the webinar. And then here we're covering consumer uh, customer acquisition, retention and frequency at scale, which is not just acquiring customers, but keeping them and bringing them back again and again. Building brand equity and social scaling, leveraging influencer marketing, which is what Greta will cover. Uh, and then conversion funnels and paying more for your customers by driving high AOV uh, with conversion funnels, click funnels, single, single product funnels. This is Mo's area of expertise. Uh, so this makes up the six kits, uh, key skills of the e-commerce journey that we covered in our mini course. Startup strategy, creative and Facebook ads, uh, key metrics in Google Analytics, conversion funnels, influencer marketing, uh, and then consumer uh, acquisition and retention frequency at scale. And if you manage all those things, there's supposed to be sunglasses that come down on that guy's face to show you how cool he is. But if I can make him dab, he'd dab. Because if you could do all of six of these things in your e-commerce journey, uh, you would be set up to create millions, billions of dollars over the course of your life. So let's start with Nick Shackelford here. Start with a bang. Start with that big like $12 million screenshot right there. Nick is literally, when you say like the global 1% of the world, Nick is in the global 0.01% when it comes to Facebook marketing. He's operating with some of the coolest, uh, most advanced performance marketing brands out there, and he's driving incredible results. He's having six-figure months on the reg uh, with multiple of his clients, and he's thinking about things, especially with Facebook ads, at a whole other level. You can see some of the statistics he's able to operate with here. We're super happy to have him part of the course, uh, and he's really... Uh, here to tell us a little bit about uh, about his shtick. Well, sure. Welcome, Nick. I'm gonna make you. I'm gonna make you the presenter here. So, um, change presenter. Okay, sharing. Okay. Uh, Nick is. Yep, you are the presenter now. Show my screen. <clears throat> okay, we should be able to see me. We got me. Beautiful. Well, there guys, we great to meet you, my name is Jack Ford. Um, so I'm in a very interesting situation right now. So I started back where maybe you guys might um, have kids or yourself or your husband or some wife or girlfriend or nerds, whoever, whoever is there in your family, uh, they pop up off the And that is, that is exactly where um, I got my start. So my background was I played professional soccer. It wasn't fulfilling enough. I wasn't impacting as many lives. And where I am today is really, really focused upon helping brands that are doing eight to nine figure years, months is, is, is my sweet spot. So I've been very, very fortunate enough to put a lot of my attention on drop shipping at the beginning. So I realized there's just one avenue of growing a business and I didn't understand the fulfillment, the manufacturing, the margins, the deals, the brand equity, something sustainable that you can actually sell because a lot of the people that I'm working with on a daily basis and I have Currently where I sit is I have a team of nine and then my nine members between designers and media buyers um, between account managers is we manage 27 accounts. So think about this. You are working on your one brand 24 seven. That's all you have to, to understand. It's all you live. It's what you know. You're getting input from so many different people and this input might not be necessarily applicable or applicable to your business. Um, where I get to sit and, and, and communicate to everybody is, I know it's happening, I know it's working across every other industry, across different price points, across different niches. And as you know, uh, Zuckerberg, his wallet took a massive hit. And what is this gonna mean for, for consumers right now? So what this means for us really is, we need to be thinking with a little bit more of a delayed gratification and more of a growth mindset. And what this really means is you can't put all your investment into one channel thinking that it's going to produce all the money that you want for your business. Um, this is something we talk about at length in, in my courses. This is really hard to kind of go over in, in the next like five, ten minutes I have to speak. But what you can tell by these examples are is when you're building something with retention at the beginning, your, your mindset is a little different. You're willing to accept a little bit of lower return knowing that you can, you're in it for the long run. You don't need immediate capital right now. And I know some of you are thinking, well, you know what, I do need capital right now. That's fine. This, when Eric talked about in this slide is, there's a place to start, but you still can apply the long-term mind frames as you want to private label and build your own brand and start investing. 
Because as soon as you listen to uh, Mo and listen to Greta, you're, when you're investing in influencers, when you're investing in things to accentuate your brand, you're only making those plays if your brand is going to be around for a long period of time. If you're just finding a winning product and calling it a day after it worked or didn't work, your thought process is a little different. So here's a little quiz right now is on the left side, these are my focus on drop shipping. And what we're trying to win with is a little bit of 50% off, offer, get it today, act quick. Whereas on the right side with these well-established brands, you have 47 brand as well as slick products. These brands are here. They're trying to give you some educational content so that you want to stick around, that you want to kind of be a part of that brand's journey. That's the big thing is you want your consumers coming into your product and sticking with you so you don't have to continue to pay to acquire them. And why this to me is so, so important nowadays is we just pulled a stat. So we have all the brands and super metrics and we grabbed all the C, uh, all the, where the CPM is at the beginning of time for all of our ad accounts. And all the statistics that were showed, CPM, which is cost per impression, cost per 1,000 people you have to hit, has grown 122%. Let that sink in. When you're trying to reach people, it has gotten 100 times more expensive to reach the same audience. It's crazy. If, you, if your entire business is built on the back of one channel of uh, revenue, which is Facebook, it's how do you plan, how do you find something that's going to produce consistent revenue for you? You have to be planning otherwise. And for me, is you have to be thinking about building those other channels to support that revenue. So on Facebook, this can be done. So uh, Eric alluded to was, was glue. And in the main talk I have on retention and frequency purchases is understanding who your VIP customers are. And it's the person that's coming back and back you multiple times. The little, this is very one repeat purchaser is equal to nine first time buyers and that's based upon your average conversion rate of a new consumer touching a brand uh, brand equity so if you're thinking about it if you want to invest your time on trying to grab someone in your ecosystem versus paying to re-engage or showing a great email that you already owned to the consumer for the conversion rate that they've already spent money with you there's already trust there that's where all my dollars are going of realizing how do we rotate a different offer how do we re-engage with someone based on the first product they purchased? That is where the retention and future thinking mindset is, is that you have to adopt if you're gonna find success. And what does it really even kind of detail out is, on the left side, this is where you win, right? On the left side with your short-term acquisition thinking, it's I'm gonna win with tactics, I'm gonna win with price cuts, I'm gonna win with a little bit of bundling to get more on the AOV front side because I know they're never gonna buy from me again. But you're only getting people coming back ever so often. So this is the all of last year, which is 6% repeat purchase rate, versus where the brands that are focused on quality content, customer service, um, responding to those that are reaching out to them. This is where the time and effort needs to be. Because now you're not paying to get more consumers because you need that money. You're just investing in the consumers that have already been investing in you. That is where the, the biggest outcome and the biggest focus should be when thinking about, okay, I have my product, I found it. Cool, I'm getting a little bit of traction. We have a great, we have a great uh, niche, we have a great spot. Now, how do we build, like Eric said, how do we build a white label brand that now I wanna own all the data? Now I want my consumers buying one, two, three, four times from me. That's where the really the next level go from of understanding, I don't wanna just acquire a new customer, I wanna keep that customer so that I have a consistent pool of people a tribe that's going to buy anything I put out. Now you have an asset to sell. Now you can start looking at merging and acquisitions and, and sell that product that you, or sell that company that you've been building. That's what gets me excited. That's where I spend a lot of my time. And I know Eric and Mo and even Greta, Greta said more success on the branding side than myself, but the clients I work with is if I take it from zero to selling, I've only done this one time. That is the place where I want to stay at. And for you guys jumping in the game, thinking already that, I want to build something sustainable that's not just for me to win, but for my friends, my family, and um, my, 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 my consumers that I'm going to be attracting. That is where you get the most value. Nice. Yeah, and I think that's, I mean, that's the main gist I want to get across because I know the thinking of if you're in this building, these businesses, right? If you're in it, being in it means that you, you're willing to, to think longer and think. Think about investing in the, the customer support. Like just the email that they get after a purchase 
is somebody that's not leveraged enough for whether it's upsells or whether it's just getting your brand out there. It's somebody that's so valuable for you. Nice, totally. Thank you so much, Nick. I think uh, there's a, a, a ton of value in that, and I think uh, you know we'll get into it more in, in some of the question period. But the, the level that you, that you bring to the table when it comes to to it's funny you, you you're focused on this like long term thing, but I think also your tactics. You also are one of the more tactical marketers I've met. So uh, so I'm excited for uh, for for that stuff as well. Definitely. And I, I know we don't get to talk too much about the tactics here, but the point is the tactics that you need to execute are unique to your business. But if you have the thought works in the frame of where to go, you can definitely shape it into anything you're selling. Very cool. Nice. Okay, so we have Greta on the line, and I think her internet uh, connection is a little bit uh, wonky. So I'm going to manage her slides for her. So if you make me the presenter again, uh, Nick. Uh, yeah. Right click on me. I think I can just take it back. Even. Take back that control. Take back the control. I'm giving it to you, Eric. Boom. Show my screen. Okay, awesome. <laughs> well, uh, I'll do a quick intro for Greta here. So when we found out that Greta was interested in doing a course with it, with us, we really jumped on it. Uh, Greta has taken an approach in this space that I think is really admirable and something that uh, you know, it, it goes flies in the face of the advice that we give about being scrappy and, and starting up with drop shipping and low barrier to entry products. Uh, Greta basically jumped into the game uh, and won uh, the Shopify Build a Business contest for her for Skinny Me Tea, uh, and and has never looked back. She's four for four at building high performance performance marketing e-commerce brands. Um, she did an amazing case study with us where she articulated exactly how she leveraged influencers with the fifth in order to drive $232,000 in like uh, basically a minute, in, uh, which is just absolutely ridiculous. She uh, she credits the, the fifth, Skinny Me Tea, Drop Bottle, and others. Uh, she has a brand uh, where she's helping people leverage influencer marketing. It's called, uh, it's Hey, uh, Hello Hey. Uh, she, hey, Hey Influencer, exactly. Uh, I want to welcome you to the webinar, Greta. She's here to talk a little bit about the importance of building brand equity and how you can leverage it with influencer marketing. Amazing. Uh, hey guys. Uh, so I'm really excited to be able to be here chatting with you today. Uh, I think it's best we just jump right into it because there's quite a bit to cover in this topic. Um, so I'm here today to talk to you about the power of influencer marketing for brand building and also how I was able to personally use influencer marketing to scale my e-commerce brands into the eight figures. Uh, and I'm in a bit of a unique position to talk with you today on this topic because I've been on both sides of the market as both an influencer and a brand. Uh, so from an influencer perspective, I've grown my combined social following on Instagram to over 16 million followers. And from a brand side, I've collaborated with over 5,000 influencers with my brands alone. Actually, I'm so obsessed with influencer marketing that I've even created my own influencer marketing platform called Hey Influencers that Eric just mentioned. And the really great thing about Hey is that now I've been able to watch hundreds of brands work with thousands of influencers. Um, so that's given me even further insight into, I guess, the exact steps that you need to follow to create a truly effective and powerful influencer marketing campaign. Uh, so combined with the fact that I've... Um, Sorry, um, oh, sorry, I just switched slides, there we go. Uh, sorry, basically how I found out about influencer marketing, I first knew I was onto something with influencers when I started my first startup, Skinny Me Tea. Uh, one of our earliest influencers was from Tasmania and she only had a thousand followers at the time, which back in 2012, when Instagram was kind of first starting out, I think by the end of 2012, Justin Bieber only had 400,000 followers. So actually having a thousand followers was quite influential at the time. And we didn't actually pay her or even give her free product. She was just a customer who posted about the product because she loved it. Um, and this ended up being our biggest day of sales at the time. Uh, so from that point on, basically, whenever I came across someone on social media who fit our brand, I'd screenshot them, reach out and send them free product. And this is the number one contributing factor to scaling Skinny Me Tea from 
zero dollars when we first started to six hundred thousand dollars a month within six months organically without almost any paid marketing at the time um so i guess you're wondering why influencer marketing is so powerful and it's a combination of things really uh firstly attention so attention spans are at the shortest they've ever been consumers are tuning out brand content so platform native influencer generated content is the way forward for brands to get that much needed consumer attention. Uh, next up, there's trust. So consumer trust in brands is at an all time low. Influencers on the other hand have the pre-earned trust of their audience and can leverage this on a brand's behalf. A report by um, Nielsen, I think it was, found that 92% of people trust recommendations from influencers even if they don't know them over brands. So it's the fact that influencers, I guess, don't only have an audience's attention, but they also have their trust uh, that makes influencer marketing so powerful from an ROI perspective. And studies again have shown that influencer marketing can achieve 11 times the ROI of any other um, form of digital marketing with an average of $6.50 made for every $1 invested. Uh, so influencer marketing is seriously powerful. Uh, now I want to address a, like, a really limiting mindset that I've seen again and again in the e-commerce industry. And that mindset's that if you're selling things online, you're building a brand. And unfortunately, this isn't always necessarily the case, as Nick was just talking about. So as I see it, there's a fundamental difference in e-commerce. Uh, there's the difference between building an e-commerce store and building an e-commerce brand. And a lot of people I talk with um, don't really understand why brand's important or even what the concept of brand itself is. Uh, so a friend of mine at a world-class branding agency called Love and Money Agency defined brand for me recently. His name's Toby. And I wrote it down for you guys and I'll just read it out here. Uh, he said, a brand is something that you can sell if you no longer have any products or services to sell. If you have no equity in your name, something believe in, buy into and see value in, then you have no brand. So this answer was really, really helpful because it highlights that importance of building a brand alongside what a brand really is. So I guess if you think about it in terms of an e-commerce store, you need to have products on that store for it to be worth anything. Uh, so if you just want to make money in the short term, you can completely go about it in that way, create a store, make sales, you know, drop ship, potentially sell somebody else's product. I get that and that is more than fine. It's completely fine. It's just not personally what excites me. For me, I want to be able to build something longer term and more sustainable uh, than if I want to, I want to be able to sell it one day, not just for a sales multiple. So I want to be building and creating brand equity and goodwill that'll skyrocket the valuation of my company. Uh, so if you're like me and you want that too, you'll need to consider brand. And this is where influencers come in. Uh, influencers have the capacity to scale brand equity at an unprecedented rate. Like we spoke about, they're able to leverage their audience's pre-earned trust on a brand's behalf across multiple, I guess, emotional checkpoints um, to create a more authentic connection between your consumer and your brand. And a great example of this is when we started the fifth, we created a list of our top 30 influencers that we'd worked with before and we sent them out product before we launched and working closely with these 30 influencers and this is exactly what's detailed in part um, in my case study that I did with iStack. Um, we were able to create beautiful branded content that helped us generate hype and demand before launch. Um, and so using influencer marketing and Instagram marketing alone, we're able to form a wait list of over 8,880 people uh, who were ex like just really excited for our launch. Uh, and they helped contribute to our hugely successful first day of sales, where we made over $100,000 in revenue in our single day of sales. Uh, and this actually ended up um, forming what became our model for the fifth whereby we only sold on the fifth of each month for five days because we just kept selling out of stock and coming back into stock and it just seemed like a great solution to that problem. And then also in the end, that scarcity and exclusivity and like the increase in 
uh, I guess, like demand and perceived value of our product was our number one unique value proposition for that product. Uh, so yeah, like influencer marketing alone contributed to that launch. We didn't do anything outside of influencer marketing and Instagram marketing uh, for the launch. So um we used the same tactics again to grow when we made it, uh, did our like $1 million a day, which is shown on the screen at the moment. And yeah, as you can see, $233,000 of this is generated in the first minute of sales. Um, so I'd love, I guess, to teach you absolutely everything I've learned about influencer marketing. Uh, and I've created this comprehensive research, uh, resource with iStack and I honestly, I know for a fact that this is the most comprehensive resource on influencer marketing in the market available right now. I've looked into all the other resources, I've done a lot of research, and this covers topics that have almost like never been spoken about online, which is I, I found a bit shocking. Uh, so basically, I've broken this down into three modules, which is around uh, 20 lessons and more than five hours of content for you. Um, and so in module one, uh, which I think Eric will be going into a bit more detail about this later. Um, uh, here we go, here's the slide. Uh, so in module one, we'll be covering how to, I guess, reverse engineer your influencer marketing goals to create powerful influencer marketing campaigns that convert and actually get the results you want. In module two, we'll be covering all the things that uh, like all things influencers, I guess, from how to identify the right influencers to your brand using the three R's, which are reach, relevancy and relationship, to working with micro and macro influencers, and then exact tactics to find the perfect influencers for your brand on social media. Uh, so in module three, I'll cover how to collaborate with influencers, the best and worst practices, how to negotiate or even get a response in terms of following up with influencers, as well as relationship building and, of course, tracking ROI. Uh, so, yeah, that's all from me for now, but I really hope we can continue this talk and to work together using this course, I guess, as a springboard to kickstart your e-commerce brand and influencer marketing efforts. Very cool. Thank you so much, Greta. Um, let us, you know, you can see the power of, of what, what happens when, you, when you're able to build a brand and you're able to leverage uh, so the power of social media to, to scale it and, and the tactics. That's what's really cool uh, with Greta. And, you know, these, this ability to, to leverage scarcity is such a, such a powerful thing that, that you really uh, leverage so well with, uh, with the fifth there. So now we're going back into uh, sort of out of, the, out of the brand space and a little bit more into the tactical areas of how to actually drive higher purchase values. And if there's one person I know who's an expert at that, it's Muhammad Ali Agel. He hasn't sent me uh, all of his uh, amazing screenshots just yet, but I know that he is an eight-figure e-commerce entrepreneur. The guy's just a master at spinning up e-commerce products, stores, brands, and making them scale at incredible paces, incredible speeds. Uh, so he's here to talk a little bit about that. Do you want me to man your slides, Mo, or are you just going to talk over your own face here? Oh, I'm good, man. I'm good. Uh, so the reason okay. why there are no slides because uh, I jumped on this webinar last minute. I just got in the hotel. I'm like, let's do it. I literally got the hotel just to be on this webinar because everyone else, the internet sucks. But with that being said, what will I be covering and why uh, Why what will I be covering is so important is, as uh, Nick said, the, the the state of Facebook advertising right now is uh, is not looking good. I mean, things are getting more and more and more expensive, 30% 30, 30 from quarter to quarter. So unless you guys have a lot of money in the bank, a lot of money that you can invest and wait like, until the second purchase or until the third purchase which will happen maybe in two three weeks or next month and you can sit on that money you will not be able literally to uh, be profitable in your business now the difference between what i do maybe and what nick does is he runs with brands and i use like my own money my own uh, my my own traffic and my own funnels so the big brands like greta built and nick deal with they can they can afford to spend that money and wait for it to come back. Like they can wait, you know, four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks for that money to come back. Man, I do what the poor guy does. I want my money 
profitable. Like I want my business to be profitable. I want to be profitable day one. And that's why I focus on the AOV so much and the LTV day one, like the, the, the first day LTV and how much money I can make from that uh, customer on the first day, at least in the first three days. But to be honest with you, I focus on the first three days. So let's, let, let's go back to the basics. Here. Let's go to the basics of why or how you can make more money in the in your business. There are three ways to do it, and in America they do three ways, but we're in Europe, so there are three ways to uh, to increase your business: attract new customers, increase the frequency of uh, of your customers, or increase the average sale per visit. So the first two uh, ways to increase your business that's what Nick will be covering: attracting a new customer, customer acquisition through Facebook. And uh, Instagram, I guess that's what Greta will be covering, if I'm not mistaken. And then increasing the customer of uh, the increasing the frequency of your customer. That's again, Nick. We're abusing you, so brother. Sorry. And then uh, the the third one. That's what I'm covering, which is increasing the average sale per visit. And that's the AOV and. Uh, when it comes to AOV, uh, it's, a, it's a set of tactics that I'll be teaching the set of, uh, of a fundamental uh, mindset that you guys need to overcome. And that's how I kind of switched from what I was doing before to what I'm doing now, which is, again, focusing on the increasing that AOV, which it was like one sentence. One sentence literally changed how I look at e-commerce and how I look at uh, sales funnels and all that. And the sentence is the business that can spend more to acquire a customer wins. I even have that, I think, yeah, it is. My cover uh, my cover photo on Facebook, the business that can spend the most to acquire a customer wins. How I look at Facebook, it's a little bottle, it's a war between me and the competition. Whoever outbid the, the competition wins. There is no way going around that. There is no hack, like that, that, that it, for me, that's how we do it. That's what how it should be done, especially, again, if you want to be profitable on day one and not wait like for 60 days to get your money back. And that's literally what I will be covering in uh, my module in uh, e-commerce uh, All-Stars. Uh, you will be learning about how to do that on Shopify and how to do that on Funnels and uh, all that good stuff. Nice. So that's in a nutshell what will be covered and why will it be covered and why it's so important. Because you can be a badass baller like Mo, traveling the world, running e-commerce stores, building an empire, and always looking so dapper. It's the first time I've seen you on camera without a tie, though. So I guess you're in, you're in know, vacation. But I got the shop by shirt, though. Ah, very nice. <laughs> very nice. Okay, cool. Thank you so much, Mo. Um, so let's go here. So okay, now I'm gonna give my quick. Also, I'm gonna do this quick because I think some of you guys maybe heard it on the last one. But I, I wanted to give, you know, I was talking, I, I always work with these experts uh, and who, are, who are building incredible e-commerce stores, e-commerce brands and things like that. And I was trying to think, okay, what can I bring to the table? And I started thinking about what I've done with ISAC training. Uh, and I sort of realized that I, I've kind of done a very similar thing uh, that we sort of advocate to people who are, who are starting out as well. So what I did is I focused on a passion niche. I found something that I, I did something that was a little different because it's something I'm passionate about and that's not always the best play. Sometimes you want to go with what's trending. But I knew that over the next years, based on the, the, the economy statistics that I posted earlier, that people taking their own lives in their hands, building their own businesses online, leveraging performance marketing, it was going to be a huge growing trend. I, I, I knew that, recognize, you know, recognized that. And so I decided I want to build a business around this passion niche. Uh, speaking to entrepreneurs, speaking to affiliates, speaking to uh, Shopify store owners, essentially. So I, that's what I what I found. So when I, and then I jumped into the competitive analysis. So I looked at Ryan Dice's Digital Marketer. I looked at Udemy and Linda and all the different sort of education platforms that were out there. And I saw, especially the biggest ones, weren't really hitting the the the, the notes that I wanted to hit. They weren't really leading the charge on performance marketing. They were they were speaking to a slightly different audience. They were teaching slightly different things. Their, their, uh, the quality of their education seemed a little bit more aligned with what the universities were teaching, which is quite often outdated. So I was like, I'm gonna jump in there. So then I decided I wanna build a brand. Uh, and so I basically, I made the logo in Google Sheets. Literally, I, I took the logo, put a bunch of lines together. I'm like, I want it to look like a stack. And then I worked with our amazing design team, built out this, this, this pretty quality logo, built the brand around this idea of stacking your skills, this idea of stacking yourself, making yourself strong, resilient, robust, which is where my, my podcast came from as well. 
Uh, and then and then I set about making quality content. Like my favorite thing to do is to have conversations with amazing entrepreneurs. And so that's essentially what I did. I sort of just, you know, I, I you, people ask me like how I got my podcast started. Like it's one program called Ecamm Solutions. It's Skype and it's, a, it's some appointment setting and it's a list of questions that I sometimes have, sometimes don't. Uh, and then I just go through and try to extract value, have good conversations with good people. Uh, and I started producing like quality content every week and I've been doing that for a year and it's, it's paid real dividends. Then when it comes to like product and distribution, I essentially, what I wanted to do was, uh, was, was sell multiple kinds of products. So instead of just, uh, you know, flipping from AliExpress necessarily, I'm like, I'm going to make a bunch of products. I'm going to make a bunch of e-learning products and I'm going to make different kinds. I'm going to make kinds that are an hour long, that are, that are, uh, you know, uh, shorter and more digestible based on specific skills. Uh, Mo made us one of those as well. That was our first engagement. He made a course on um, how to how to scale e-commerce basically on Facebook, and it's just specifically about that one niche topic, and it's been a big hit. Um, we created live events, so we're selling live events, live tickets. We're we're doing masterminds. We have this whole sort of value chain of different kinds of products that we're selling. We're going to start up a merch store, so more people can get uh, our sick lids and things like that, and value signal uh, about, about how they're part of our movement that that we're building here. And, uh, and so it's sort of this hybrid product distribution model that I, that I articulated. And that's my personal e-commerce startup strategy for iStack I training. Essentially, um, yeah, I just sort of explained all of this. Uh, if you can see, this is a little piece of statistic that we have about people who are able to sell more than one kind of products when they start out, uh, rather than relying on one specific distribution model, one specific product type, people who have a hybrid model uh, are able to, to, to basically make more upwards of $130,000 a month, according to our expert survey. Um, so what are the results from iStack training? So in, in just over a year, we've had 15 courses, five sold out live events, including three sold out conferences, which have been the highlights. Uh, we've had uh, two masterminds, three masterminds, if you count two of our dinners, and we're hitting seven figures in revenue and growing on a super healthy net margin. Uh, for all my Facebook nerds out there, we've got a four times return on ad spend on Facebook ads, which is uh, nothing to sneeze at when you're when you're building a brand. You, you know, we're making money on the front end and we're building something for the, for the long run, which is which is what I'm really excited about. I think we've already established ourselves as a pretty well-known learning brand, uh, and, we're, and influencers are lining up to work with us. There's, you know, every time I go to a show, I've got people pitching me on courses they want to do, uh, and things like that. So it's uh, it, it's gone really, really well. I, I think we're getting so much good feedback about the brand, so much good feedback about the content, uh, and then then our goal is essentially build up a bunch of goodwill, build up value, build up, make sure people understand that we're we're there to produce high quality stuff, and then when we're ready to make an offer. We trigger it and people buy. That's the way it's been since we started and I expect no different in the next uh, 10 minutes or so. So we have about 4,000 subscribers on YouTube, which isn't huge. Most of our views and most of our engagements come on Facebook. That's been a strategic choice, but we have a ton of engagements on YouTube. We've had over a million views there, which is pretty, for our niche audience, I'm pretty excited about. Uh, we have 10,000 Facebook fans and over 15 million uh, audience members reached. And it has been the craziest, most personal growth filled 1.5 years of my life. And I've lost 20 pounds, so you know it's uh, it, it's been a, it's been a lot of fun. I've been able to build a team here in Victoria. There, I was hoping uh, my two uh, Angela and, and my two employees would be in here, uh, but I've uh, been able to build a team with people that I love working with. Uh, it's been a really fulfilling year, and so I, I highly uh, advise taking my personal blueprint and, and seeing what you can do with it. So, so now you've had a chance to see the level of value that we're bringing to the table with the speakers, the teachers, the trainers. The, the kind of content, the mindset that goes into how we built out this content. Uh, you know, we've covered the three skills uh, that you need to get started properly, that you need to sort of scale your business to that next level. Uh, we've covered the three limiting beliefs that you need to overcome uh, to, to basically achieve this high level of e-commerce success. You've learned my personal strategy for my e-commerce business's success. So now imagine you were able to build a, a, a really great business selling physical products. Maybe you start with drop shipping, uh, maybe you jump right to a brand because you have a really great idea about it, but you learn your niche, you learn your audience, you hone your skills, you learn how to sell to them, you learn what they want, and then maybe you build a billion dollar CPG brand or retail brand. Maybe you know, maybe you, but maybe you start by banking a couple hundred thousand dollars a month and, and building up a plan to, to, to create a, a software as a server business. But basically once you start on this e-commerce journey uh, and you realize that you can create products and sell them for less money than you earn when you sell them, when you realize that there's so much money to be made there, it's it's like a trigger that can trigger the rest of your life into manifestation. 
which is what we're what we're all about here with iStack training. So imagine you're mastering these incredibly valuable skills. Imagine from January to June, you're doing $12 million in sales. Imagine what the margin is, is on that. Imagine what that kind of money could do uh, for your friends and your family, building something long term. Uh, imagine financial freedom where you can literally have your businesses running while you're running around Paris or you know some island in Aruba or wherever Greta is, uh, and your money is still ticking along. You're making money all the time. Uh, you're setting, you're building up processes that Nick talks about in order to to make sure that you can have this kind of freedom uh, and 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 make good money on the side. You can live life, and this is the biggest thing for me is that in our world right now, there's so much. There's a lot of chaos in the world right now. And I think if you can control, the more you can control about your own work-life freedom, the better off you're gonna be in the long run. The more you can take that into your own hands and not rely on the government, not rely on big corporations, not rely on anyone else, but you can build this sort of reality for yourself, for your friends, for your family, uh, I think it's a highly advisable tactic to take. So this dream is happening. This e-commerce dream is happening right now for hundreds of thousands of people all over the globe. That's the really cool thing about e-commerce too. We have, how many different countries do we have on this webinar? We have dozens and dozens of different countries. The access to this opportunity is greater than the access to any other opportunity in the past. And I think that's one of the coolest things about that. So no matter where you are in the world, you have this ability to create incredible online businesses. It can happen for you. And if it's happening for you already, it can happen better. It can, it, you can grow uh, if you have the right guidance and support and if you take action. So I wanted to ask you a question. This is the part of the webinar where we go from providing value uh, to making you an offer. And I wanna know if it's okay if I make you guys an offer. I've been working on this course for the past six months. Greta alluded to it. Mo's talked about it a little bit. Shackleford did as well. Uh, but we've been building an absolute beauty of an e-commerce course. We think it's the greatest e-commerce course ever created, and I want to tell you about it right now. Is that okay? In the chat, someone, someone give me a, a yes if it's okay. I guarantee it is. Yep, it's all good. Here we go. Uh, okay, so he, so this is your opportunity right now. If you want to work with these people uh, it, as your mentors. Uh, take a look at this little video right here. If you want to learn from them, all their super valuable skills, we created a one minute video right here. That's the first time I'm playing a video in GoToWebinar. back on there that, that is the video that we created for e-commerce all-star training uh that was a lot of fun i'm going to go back to my screen um yeah so that's basically what we're here to tell you guys about is e-commerce all-star training we basically broke the e-commerce journey down into six component parts and it's meant to go from starting up a successful e-commerce event e-commerce venture all the way through to scaling it to eight figures so we started with nick peroni who's one of the the, the, the people who's helped the most people start their e-commerce businesses. And he starts with a 10 hour unit on e-commerce startup strategy where he literally is opening a store for the purposes of this course and documenting the process, how he thinks about it, how he thought about his niche, and then how he goes all the way to start testing products, picking up with then Ben Malal, who's one, who's one of the leading global experts on Facebook ads and creative. And he then shows you how to test and scale Facebook ads. He gives you everything you need to know about how to run Facebook ads for e-commerce. Uh, then we got Dimitri Skiatis, who's an expert at Google Analytics. He consults with some of the biggest e-commerce people around. He helps them find money that they've left on the table uh, through his expertise of Google Analytics. Now, no matter what level you're at right now, he's got lessons in his course that can help you uh, make more money from the customers coming to your website. Uh, then, of course, Mohamed Aliyah Gell teaching about how to drive higher average order value 
uh, in a number with a number of different tactics through his course. Greta Van Riel with the most comprehensive course ever created on influencer marketing, uh, which on its own would be worth the cost of this course eventually. Uh, Nick Shackelford with Audience Segmentation Remarketing Advanced Scaling, one of the most advanced Facebook courses you will ever find. Um, oh, there you go. There's the sunglasses. You, if you were able to master these skills, you truly would put yourself in an absolutely insane position for e-commerce. So here's what you're going to get. Uh, let's start with Nick. So Nick, you get, like I say, one of the most advanced Facebook courses ever created. You, you know, Nick is laying bare all the tactics, all the strategies that he's used to drive incredible results for GIF eyewear, pup socks, uh, and lots more. So that course on its own could easily be valued at $2,000. There's no doubt about it. Then you've got Greta Van Reel's amazing course on influencer marketing, the first and only of its kind available out there, filled with case studies and results. That course, easily $2,000. Like I say, we've done 15 different courses. We've sold at multiple different price points. And I've looked at all this content and it is easily worth $2,000 on its own. You got Muhammad Ali, again, first course of its kind. No one has focused directly in on conversion funnels, uh, the way that Mo is going to for this course, and easily that course again for $2,000 would be a steal. So if we were to give you all three of these courses for a total value, $5,991, it would be worth it. You look at Mo, uh, you look at Nick's uh, outline here. All these outlines are available online. You can take a look at them uh, about everything that they're teaching you about how to test products, how to validate products, how to scale. How to how, that's such an interesting one. How to actually scale. Facebook ads to extremely high levels, um, how to cross sell, how to upsell, how to segment your audience. So basically you're going to get Nick's course, you're going to get Greta's course, you're going to get Mo's course, all for the value of $6,000. We're not going to charge you $6,000 and that's not all you're going to get either. Uh, you get Greta's courses, first of its kind, teaching you everything you need to know in three modules about influencers, how to set your goals, how to approach influencers, and then how to actually make these campaigns come into life. Uh, like I say, first of its kind, $2,000, that would be a steal. Uh, so you've got these three courses for the value of $6,000. Uh, we've got Mo coming in with the first of its kind, AOV is king, the king of AOV, how to basically create uh, incredible value for consumers so that they buy right away, that you make money on your first purchase. And then we got that backed up with Nick telling you how to make money over LTV, over the long-term value of, of our course. So we're really trying to provide every aspect for you within this. So if we were to give you these three master level guides, master class level guides from these masters teaching you everything you need to know about scaling, segmentation, conversion funnels, influencer marketing, at $6,000, it would be absolutely worth it. You'd make that, if you're already running stores, you're making that in, in a week uh, it, very easily. And if you're just getting started out, it would take you some time, but you'd get there to the point where this kind of investment in your future would be something you wouldn't have to worry about. Uh, and this course is not just the advanced skills of, of e-com empire building. We also cover the three super fundamental aspects of starting your business. So even if you're already in that maybe castaway segment where you've started a business and you haven't been able to make it work, going back and revisiting some of those early lessons about mindset, about strategy, about distribution, about Facebook ads, about Google Analytics, those will be super valuable for you as well. But this course is meant to be for all levels. It's meant to help beginners get into the game with the first three lessons and then help people who have built stores already scale to incredible heights uh, with all six of these lessons. So if you combine all six of these lessons, we're looking at a value uh, basically, you know, eleven, twelve thousand dollars. If if we were charging twelve thousand dollars for these three level, you know, the first three courses on advanced level tactics and scaling, and then we were to provide the three most fundamental levels of fundamental courses on how to get started, we could easily be charging twelve thousand dollars for this. We could hook up a call center and we could just start smiling and dialing, and we could sell this stuff for sure. Uh, Nick Peroni, he's got ten plus hours plus his own stores case study. We sell that for two thousand dollars. Uh, you can take a look online about the link I'm just about to show you. Uh, ben Malal has a full, everything you need to know about getting started with Facebook ads, how to make sure that you can look at your campaigns, you can have your ad sets, your naming conventions just right, so that when you place your pixel in the right spot, you start building your audiences, you'll be able to, you know, the, the ads that are producing profit for you will just jump out at you the way he's, he's set up this course. Uh, everything you need to know about getting started with Facebook ads, Ben Malal. Uh, so we've got these three courses on their own. The, the, the three intro fundamental courses could sell for $6,000. So that puts us at $12,000. Uh, you're going to get all of these courses, uh, a value of $12,000, including Dimitris' course, which covers not just Google Analytics, but Google AdWords as well, which is, I feel like, an area a lot of people neglect in their businesses, both the, the, 
really understanding their metrics. And also Google AdWords is something that I think a lot of people don't run with. He teaches you everything you need to know about both those topics, easily a value of $2,000 as well. So if you had these three courses on how to get started and how to master the fundamentals and these three other courses on how to scale to that next level, if we were charging $12,000 for these, it would be worth it. If you basically, uh, if you get a bunch of multiple products clicking, you use modes tactics to build out a single product funnel, you find an ability to scale these, you get some of Shaq's uh, automations that allow you to basically over time uh, know your LTV and market aggressively in the, in the front so that you can make money on the back end as well. You get Greta's course in there about how to leverage some influencers so that you could build up a scarcity campaign and do hundreds of thousands of dollars in a minute. $11,000 would be nothing. $12,000 would be nothing on this journey. Now, that's not all you're getting though. You're also getting a private community with these six all-stars there to be your mentors. Essentially, we're going to be dropping fresh case studies in that group. We're going to be doing six all-star Ask Me Anything live classroom sessions with each of them over the course of this. Now, their time is incredibly valuable. It's something I've realized in working with them. So when we're saying that you'd be paying you so $97 a month for 12 months for access to this private group, that's a gross understatement. It would be quite a bit more to actually get these people uh, to consult on your business and take a look at your store. But if you take this course, that's what you're going to get. We're going to get these live sessions with each of these all-stars. We're going to get an amazing private community, community dedicated to your success. So let's value that at $1,100.64. Here's a little bit of what the group looks like. Uh, so we're going to combine the first three lessons, the second three lessons, each valued at around $6,000. That's over 35 hours of the most cutting edge e-commerce training ever created. We're going to add in the private group stocked with, with mentors as well as expert mods. We're going to be dropping fresh case studies. We're going to be doing Ask Me Anything. It's going to be amazing. So if you value that right now, we're over $13,000, but we're not going to charge you $13,000. And we're adding more. Ezra Firestone. So you guys may have heard Ezra Firestone wasn't able to make it to e-commerce mastery live. Uh, which was a big blow. He had a really sad reason for not being able to make it, which we fully understood. But in true Ezra fashion, he decided he'd make it up for us and create us a custom module called Ezra Firestone's Essential E-Commerce Email, which is another key component of what you need to master in this e-commerce journey. And Ezra Firestone's gonna come through in the clutch board. I know he charges $1,500 for his email course, but his essential version is gonna be bundled with this course for free if you buy today. We also have messenger marketing. Messenger marketing is the new, it's not replacing email mar marketing, but when you combine it in your flow, it's a hugely valuable part. He just did a talk about adding $13,000 in a week on, on one of his product launches, just using doing 10 minutes on messenger marketing. And he's included a module on this course for us. We have that valued at $300, but it could easily be more as well. So you're gonna get the first three lessons. The second three lessons, 35 hours of the most cutting edge e-commerce training ever created. You're getting the access to our private community. You're getting access to Ezra Firestone's essential e-commerce email, Seth Smith's messenger marketing for e-commerce. What That puts us at 13,740, uh, which is, you know, that seems like a lot, but again, if you are able to build a long-term business, if you're able to build uh, and you jump into this e-commerce game and control the way your life goes, and have make you will make millions over the course of your life. So no matter where you are, whether in your journey, whether you're a dreamer, a castaway, or an expert, there are learnings in this course that will take you from where you are to where you want to go. That's why we designed it like this. That's why we designed it as a journey. So whether it's startup strategy, Facebook ads, Google analytics, influencers, conversion funnels, or advanced scaling and remarketing, this course has you covered. Uh, so again, we showed this in the, in, the, in the round there, but if you were to like master three of these skills, you could build yourself an amazing e-commerce career. If you mastered four or five or six of these, you could literally be unstoppable as an entrepreneur. You would generate millions of profit in a year and billions over your lifetime. I'm not even exaggerating. So if this course was $13,740, it would be extremely worth it. We're not charging that. Our course is available for a very limited time only for $2,997. Praise Jeebus. That is an incredible price for this amount of content. Uh, and you can go to it from, go to istack.link slash allstar right now. We are standing by, I'm standing by with my Yahoo button. As soon as we get our first sale, I'm going to hit it and you're all going to hear it. Uh, I'm super excited about it. This course is available, like I say, for a very limited time. If you go right now to the, the, the checkout page, we've just added a new option. If you guys were on this before, I wanted to let you know, you can buy it for a one-time payment of $2,997, but we just offered the ability for you also to secure your spot for three payments of $1,500. If that $3,000 price tag is too much for you to think about right away, um, 
we want you to be able to take advantage of our payment plan, which is something that we just added as well. So go right now to iStack.link slash all-star and take us up on this course. Uh, if you guys are sticking around, we had a lot of people stick around to the end here. I think uh, these 70 people, you, you, you get a hat. You, you get to stick around. You, you stuck around, you're gonna get one of these sweet lids. So not only, the first five action takers also will get replays from our last event, tickets to our next event. You're gonna come and meet us all in Bangkok. Uh, and we're gonna give you a sick ISAC training hat, which you're already getting if you're still here. Uh, so that's basically a $5,000 value just for people here on the webinar. Go to iStack.link slash all-star. Take us up on this right now. So we want to, I wanted to talk with the guys a little bit about this one. So like people talk about why, why not just build a course with one person? That's, you know, when we were originally uh, talking about this, we're like, okay, let's build a course with one person. My take on this and my feeling has always been when I talk with e-commerce experts and even the, I just had a conversation with the Tans and we were talking about email marketing. And I was like, oh, how did you guys like put together your email marketing? Unit? And they're like, oh, well, we went and found an expert and, uh, and worked with him. Uh, and, and the same can be true uh, across the e-commerce journey. Nobody is an expert at all aspects of e-commerce. And that's why we wanted to take six people, take six parts of the e-commerce journey, break it down, and then find the people who were the best at those individual parts. Uh, so that's basically why we did it. Uh, Mo and Shaq, what do, you, what do you guys think about why this course has been produced the way that it is? I think you're muted. Mute. You're muted, brother. Yeah, can you hear me now? Yeah, yep, all good. I'm on mute and mute thing. So yeah, uh, I think why you need uh, you need the panel of experts is like uh, you know the you know like each business has that advisory board and each one of them is uh, is an expert in one field of the business, even though they all do the same thing at the end of the day, but each one has that expertise. In, in that particular area. So for instance, like I, I would think that, I mean, like Nick will be teaching more about, I always say it like, well, I am not the greatest person at Facebook ads. Nick is better than me in that. So he would be more suited to teach that way, especially that he deals with, you know, with brands and big brands and all that stuff. So like having every expert, Covering the subject that he's or she is expert in, that's uh, that's a lot better, I feel like, and uh, I think that's uh, why you guys done what you are doing. At least from my opinion, then today you know why you did what you did. But yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, when I look at it from from like the other side of the spectrum, that's I feel like that's uh, that's uh, that's more valuable to have different people, and different people had different expertise, different experiences. And that adds more value to the course. Yeah, I fully agree. And yeah, Nick, I think I think you probably agree. In the world that I come from, is like we, we work with high level brands and we work with single entrepreneurs that are just building by themselves. The same conversation goes: you let A players do A player things, and you get out of their way, right? Like you you want to go to the people that have already been doing it, and at its core, we just have access and the experience that we've already been doing it for other people spending tons and tons of money that's going to save you right you either lose you, there's two ways of learning and we still pay for it. that's why i pay for masterminds that's why i pay for mentoring you either lose your money by going through the experience or you lose your money by learning from those that have gone through the experience by learning from those that have gone through the experience you're building a network that network this is the corniest thing but it's absolutely true your network is your net worth by having access to people that are already kind of going through your stuff, already have already failed, you can't really get that other uh, anywhere else. I have, for instance, every single time my entire life has gone um, to the trajectory of positivity is there's been three core people that have influenced the next level of growth. At each step, I've been able to pull on them to answer the questions so that A, I didn't fall susceptible to what they failed upon or, or that they hurt themselves upon. And now it's like, okay, if I didn't have them in that person at that time, I wouldn't have be where I'm at right now. This is the same exact situation, right? Like you have Mo, Nick, Greta, uh, Demetrius, Eric, myself, you have all the people in the different areas that you need a little bit of like guidance or push, or it's more reassurance, really. It's like, you already have these understandings and ideas in your mind of what you need to execute upon, but you're going, I just need to kind of like, I need a soundboard. Like, what do you think? Yeah, okay, that's how I feel. 
move forward. So this is the perfect opportunity to have different perspectives, different people speaking on their own expertise. I'm not over here speaking about influencers. Yes, I love influencers. Yes, I use influencers. But if I have questions, I'm gonna to defer to the one that lives in a day in and day out, right? Same with optimization on funnels. I'm not gonna to try to play games. I know it works, but I can't tell you the science and the methodology behind it. That's where Mo would come in. Yeah, and you, you, you spoke a little bit about the difference in perspectives too. That was one of the cool things I was excited about. We got Greta on the course as well. We've got like, if, if you want to start, if you do want to start and get your, get products out there, start building, uh, you know, sales essentially, drop shipping, doing things like that. We have you covered. Uh, Nick Peroni's there to teach you exactly the best sort of modern strategy for getting into that. But if you want to do that, or if, or if you want to go the Greta way, if you want to have, if you want to start an amazing brand, we got you covered with that as well. Or if you want to start with Nick's method, get your feet under you and then build an amazing brand. That's what this course is designed to do. When you buy the course, you have it for your lifetime. Uh, you don't you don't lose access to it. Uh, as updates happen, you'll be getting updates to it as well. Um, and this package will never be offered again. There's no way that we're going to be able to combine six people's courses uh, into one super course for this price ever again. You see, each of these courses would be valued at $2,000. So even if you forget all the other bonuses, just this amount of content from this level of person, uh, in my experience, there's no chance that we'll ever be able to offer it at this price again. So if you don't get it during this launch period, you will miss out on, on this incredible value and you will be left kicking yourself for sure. So go to iStack.link slash allstar right now. Uh, I, would, I want to give Greta just a chance to talk a little bit about, more about her course. Like the, the thing is, if, you, if this was only Greta's course, if you only got Greta's course, if you got the word, like the most comprehensive influencer marketing course ever made, the only course of its kind out there from the person who is the top practitioner of influencer marketing right now, if you only got this course for this price, it would be worth it. Uh, if you were able to launch a single influencer marketing campaign using the tactics that she talks about on this course, it would be worth it. So go to iStack.link slash allstar. Greta, what do you what do you think about uh, about this project? Yeah, I mean, it's just been an amazing thing to be involved in. It's been great uh, just even connecting with you guys. And I am I'm honestly pumped to do the course. I, I want to see what everyone's been creating. And that's what we were all saying when we all met uh, in person together at the conference, we're all just really excited to do each other's modules as well, which speaks volumes about the quality of the content. Like I was just, you know, I just, I can't wait to, I guess, like just take part in the whole experience. There's a couple sales have come through now of the two, uh, which is fantastic. It's cool to see it all going down. Uh, we're happy. We're very happy that you guys are, are digging what we're putting down, that you get what we're trying to do here with, with uh, e-commerce all-star trading. Uh, again, we're allowing you to split up the payments into three months if that $3,000 payment is a bit too much to swallow up front. Uh, I, you will get your value from this course. Uh, I am 100% confident in that. Go to iStack.link slash all-star. Uh, we want to just turn it over to see if we had any questions from the remaining attendees. Uh, so let's see here. We have a lot of people that have stuck around here. So let's uh, let's see what we got here. I'm gonna go right to the end. Bill uh, um, wants to know. Uh, Bill, if you email us at team at iStackTrading.com, uh, we can probably work out another payment method uh, if you're having some issues with payment on PayPal. So email team at iStackTrading.com. Email team at iStackTrading.com also about the hats. If you guys if you guys are still here, you want to grab the hats. We're going to let you know about how that works. Um, okay, we got Leo's laughing. Awesome. You can't mess with Mo, never. Uh, someone someone recognized that I was using a Russell Brunson type uh, webinar. Russell Brunson is a personal hero of mine. I want to get him. If you guys know him, I want to get him on my podcast really bad. Uh, and we can talk about Mormonism. Uh, any other questions? I think there were a few questions. Um, okay. I just started my e-commerce website, Leto Mart. So it gives us the brand right away. A few days back, we sell premium leather products at factory price. We received five orders in our first week. It sounds like kindly, kindly share some tips to expand to an exclusive leather selling company. I'm not sure what you mean by that exactly. Uh, leather selling company. It sounds like you're well on your way to becoming uh, an exclusive leather selling company. Uh, it, it, I imagine you want to you want to keep focusing on your brand. Uh, I would I would think. Any, anything to say about that, guys? I don't know yeah, if I understand. Be, I just, 
Uh, I know Nick's into leather. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, the, the first thing, the first thing you need to know is if it's B two C or B two B, and if they are selling leather, what are they selling? Like purses, belts, you know, men wallets, uh, women purses, whatever it is, and then we can talk about what to do. Selling leather mm. is like I'm selling paper. You know what I mean? Like, what are you doing with it? What's the product? Leather is the material. Yeah. Um, okay. If you provide Very us a bit more information. Good. Yeah. I'm good. So, for instance, we have a brand called, uh, it's called Outfield and Love um, and Fielder's Choice. Fielder's Choice is a repurposing baseball gloves and making them into wallets. So it's really, 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 really niche because all we can really market towards are baseball uh, entrepreneurs. But what we're able to do is customize. So if you have a good memory of your, your dad or your son and you send it to us, we make a wallet for you. So we know that our niche is very, very heavily driven by our AOV. And that's starting with a memory. Right? People are going to pay more for a customization item. And that's something where we love, love. Anytime you can customize something, that's the best chance for you to Kind of name your price, at least test it much higher. And even on the influencer side, just you could do tremendous things with having a, a very famous baseball player promoting whatever that product is. So if he's specific. Yeah. And again, I mean, from more of a grassroots influencer perspective, a good point to start is always through just, you know, at least doing a product for post or product for content campaign to start generating that content and that buzz around your brand from the outset. So, I mean, a good target for that would be sending out maybe around 30 uh, pieces uh, of leather, <laughs> no, I'm joking, 30, uh, you know, wallets or uh Bells. I'm not sure um, exactly what the product is, but yeah, so sending out 30 items a month to influencers so that you have kind of that constant stream of content coming in so that you're able to then, you know, repurpose that content, you know, in your paid advertising, in your email marketing, across your social channels. And so that's going to be a really good starting point for any brand that's just kind of dipping their toe in influencer marketing but doesn't want to pay to work with a huge macro influencer quite yet if the budget doesn't quite permit. So, you know, being able to test the waters and see some of those results, see the right types of influencers to collaborate with that actually do convert for your brand and then scale that and then add budget behind that and, yeah, just, like, grow from there. Nice. Uh, a few other questions here. Is drop? This is one that we get a lot. Is drop shipping good? And I think this is a, this is sort of like a, just a mis, slight misunderstanding, right? Drop shipping is a tactic. Drop shipping is one thing you can do to get products to to your customers uh, without having to hold inventory. Which is yeah, that's good. If you can do it, uh, it's good. If you can make it work, and if you can keep customers happy doing it, it's amazing. Like you, you got a guy like Ernest Epps basically who doesn't. Uh, necessarily talk to AliExpress. He goes and makes deals with manufacturers specifically. It says, "Hey, will you drop ship this for me?" And in in all those cases, it's good. The getting is good with this opportunity, but it's not it's not good or bad. It's business you build around it that is good or bad. I think. But as a tactic, I would say, yeah, it's good. What do you guys say? Yeah, I can speak to that. Drop shipping gets a bad connotation because of the negative customer experience and the poor quality of products. Right, so at its core, drop shipping has always existed. It's just the, the understanding of not holding inventory. Where people get in trouble is when you don't respect the customer, you don't give them the general, literally it's respect. You don't give them the respect to let them know that your product is coming, there is a delay. If you have any issues, we would love to handle it as soon as possible. So for people that are understanding, we work with this, I've transferred three drop shippers into white label sustainable businesses they use that entire list that they grew, not spending on inventory, to, to really invest in the actual up, upcoming product, right? So you use it as a tactic, leading you into a sustainable business. Yeah, I think that's, that, that we definitely advocate that approach as well. Um, okay, so this one's a question about the course. How do I know which course, which mentors will be best for my situation? I'm a castaway, but it's with a product that I design and developed and manufactured and shipped. I designed I designed solution-based products for growing and emerging 
markets, please help. So the best part about this course is you don't have to choose. Uh, you get everyone, you get the input of all these e-commerce heavy hitters uh, in one, and then the, the content that you gravitate towards and the, the live sessions that you attend and the, the, mass, the, the, the mentors that you sort of work on building out relationships with are entirely up to you. So in this particular case, people who design and manufacture products, I think, uh, I know Mo's done that, I know Greta's done that, I know Nick has, I think, I think that these, these three have definitely done that, I think Ben has done that as well. Um, but yeah, so like I think I think there's a lot within the, the experts that we put to, put together that could definitely help you in that particular situation, Aaron. Um, yeah, good point. Uh, let's see, Greta. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Nick. It's it's really good to just have it's like a Bible. Like when you don't really know what's next, like we don't really have a path. To, like, okay, I just start, where where should I go rather than who find that model talking about unrelevant topics that happened a couple weeks or months or years ago. This is as up to date as ever. Like I'm literally ripping reports from my whether it's the successes and the failures, right? It's, you learn just as much with all the mistakes that I'm making, so you don't have to waste your money on. And I know that's how me and Mo, when we communicate around like what's working, what's not working, he goes, yeah, don't waste your time, don't waste your money on that, I've already tried. That's what you don't get. Yeah. Uh, okay, we got a question here for Greta. What is the reason you branded the business in the watch vertical? Like, why did you go into watches? What were what was your thought process after you had that big success of, of skinny me tea? Uh, not skinny tea. Uh, why did you go into the watch vertical after? Yeah, uh, so with the fifth, I had a co-founder, Alex, and he was a lot more on the product side. So he was very watch obsessed. Um, and we connected and we started chatting and speaking about complementary skill sets like we're just chatting about now, basically. Like not everybody is as strong in every skill set. So we came together. He was more on the product side. I was more on the market side. And I just found it really interesting and exciting. And maybe I wouldn't have found it as interesting and exciting if it hadn't grown so quickly either. <laughs> Nick and I were, I see Nick laughing because we did chat about this. Like people often ask like why I started each of the companies that I have because they are in random areas and what excites me, what I'm passionate about. I'm passionate about growth at the end of the day. And I think that's what all of our instructors in this course are ultimately passionate about, like that growth yeah. mindset. So I think being able to just focus on, yeah, the metrics, the numbers, like what moves the dial for you and focusing in on the channels that actually convert for your brand is really, really important. So that is why we chose Watches uh, because my co-founder was watching obsessed and I'm growth obsessed. Nice. Um, here's a question from watches a are, Sorry, watches are The watches are the easiest thing to ship. Think about that. Like glasses, uh, watches, accessories, bangles, like that is so sexy to ship and you get to save so much, so much dollars in. And it's an easy sell. Oh, sorry. You go, go ahead. ahead. Oh, I was just saying, like, think about it with watches. This is how someone described it to me once. If you can create a watch brand and you're buying those watches for what, like probably maybe $20 tops a watch and you're selling them for $200 tops, there is a lot of room for error in there. Like you could be getting $50 a conversion, like conversions off Facebook and still be profitable. Like it yes. is, there's just insane margins. It's like fishing with dynamite. So I guess everyone after hearing this is gonna go start a watch brand, but like that is the same with a lot of different e-commerce products. And that is the same with building a brand as well. The other part that we haven't necessarily covered in brand building yet is the fact that you can charge more because your product is a branded product. Like look at the big designer labels like Louis Vuitton where their brand is all over them. Like, so at the end of the day, that brand does increase like the perceived value of your product as well. So there's so many different products. So just look at high margin products because I always call your profit margin, your mistakes margin. And there's absolutely no way that Skinny Me would be around still today, given some of the huge, huge monumental mistakes we've made if we didn't have such a great profit margin to buffer us through those. 
So look for those like high profit, easy to ship products. For sale? Fantastic. This is uh, starting to pick up here. Really cool. Uh, so if you only got Nick's course, like I say, there there isn't another course out there. You know, this is another benefit of, of, of taking this expert model essentially, uh, where we have we have been like if if we were to come in and ask Nick to be like, hey, do a course on how people need to get you know the fundamentals of how people get started with Facebook ads. That probably wouldn't have been that interesting to him because he's operating at this super high level. So that allowed him to build a five-hour course that's just based on the super high level stuff. So even if you're just starting out, you're gonna get Ben's course on how to get started with Facebook ads. And then by the time you have that mastered, you'll be ready for Nick's course, which will be all about this, this high level, high spend, high scale stuff, uh, and allows him to really focus in and get give his, his, his top valuable information in this particular thing. And so especially if you have a store running, this course will be valuable for you just like it will be the value of the course just to get Nick's, Nick's uh, lesson, which, I, which I'm really excited about as well. Isaac.link slash all-star. Nick, go ahead. I definitely, I definitely speak to that. I mean, it's like people like Nick Peroni and Ben, when they talk about getting set up and understanding where you need to go, cool, I did it. What's next? Like, how, how do I move? How do I move quicker? Right. And I know I got a lot of that feedback when I was walking through the halls at Isaac and the, the messages, I got so many dang uh, iMessages or saying, well, is this really applicable? Like, can I, I don't have a brand yet. Like, why can I use these tactics? Well, the only difference between the tax that you're playing, your tax that you're implementing and what I'm implementing is just the dollar amount behind. Them. So you can still implement everything that we're talking about. You just need to understand that your trajectory isn't going to be as hockey stick like until you get the brand equity built up, you get the repeat purchasers coming through. And now all these things start making sense. So yesterday I got off a call with his name is John Martin. John has a single product and he's selling in the uh, consumer tech niche. And I said, listen, I know you don't even have to have it. You don't even have to have it, but start putting multiple products on your store and allow yourself to appear as a more legitimate brand with more offerings. As soon as he did it, just by adding more products that he didn't sell, it looked like he had more offerings, which more legitimacy, which meant he made more profit, which makes no sense. Like he's not doing anything different except adding products to the store, but he realized that as soon as he has more things to show and offer his consumers, it psychologically allows them to believe that this person is legitimate. I want to buy from them. They have multiple things to offer. So that is where I spend my time is don't get so wrapped up on like, I don't have a million dollars to spend. Yeah, but if you have $1 to spend, you want to get the, that $4 back. That's what my thought process would be. Nice. Uh, I think there's a question while you're on Nick too here, but one of the first questions here from Goonie. Uh, Gunny, which is uh, the retention rates that you talked about a little bit in your section there, are they from different stores or the same store, different campaigns? So I talked about the one, nine to one, yeah. So the retention rate that you saw on, can you go back to the slide? I think there's a... Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. It's gonna take a minute. Oh boy. Um, so I'm gonna exit, hold on, I'm gonna get there. Okay. Then go ahead with Eric. We repeat the question once you get to it. Yeah. Okay. So which one were you here? All the way Nine down. One. Again. Nine Again. one. Repeat purchaser. One more right there. This one. Yes. Yes. The question was: uh, Were these from different stores uh, or the same store and different campaigns? So same store. So if you just look at the bottom, these are across the same period of time. Um, it was the year till date is what it really is. And the one on the left side was just the drop shipping brand that was trying to win on acquisition all of last year. So as soon as we got this brand and that we needed to focus on rotating offers to our LTB customers, customers have spent three times the amount of dollars with us. The customer that had spot in four times with us. There's different personas that consumers spend with you. And if they're gonna, you can't communicate to someone that's only bought one time with you versus someone that's bought three to four times with you. They deserve the respect to have a different message hitting them at a different period of time, whether it's on Facebook, email, or text, right? So by understanding what our customers are, like the ones that have the perfect avatar, meaning they're spending the most and they're engaging with their content, and they're providing you feedback, that's where we double down and that's how we increase the return customer rate. 
So these are all separate brands that are legitimate and focusing on retention um, versus acquisition, drop shipping, sell a single product, rotate that product. Gotcha. Uh, we have a technical question about Facebook ads here. Uh, whenever I increase budget on a winning ad set, my entire campaign sales drop. This has happened to me thrice now. Why is it so, says Asim? Is it because he's not he's not uh, scaling carefully because he's sort of scaling drastically maybe and it's not giving Facebook enough time to adjust? It's a great question. There's so many different moving variables here. So the different ways of scaling are three different ways. One, incremental budget bump, which is like 20 to 30 percent what you're currently getting. Just think about it. If you're if you're scaling your ad set, Facebook has your bid, your budget, your creative, and your audience. Those are the four things impacting success. As soon as you lever or you raise one of the levers, which is budget you're gonna get an influx of consumers that might not be your most ideal purchasers, okay? Open, it's sort of like having a small funnel and you continue to open it, you're gonna get some, some sort of crap in it. Uh, so incrementally bumping it gives it a little easier time of adjusting who to find for the algorithm. Or like you did, you just slammed it, you opened it up and hoping those it would hold. Now there's a period of time that you have to wait before you make a determination if it was successful or not successful. So me, I do make day-to-day -day decisions, but it's based on historical, uh, like three, four, five days after, but I then have to know that I, you have a little bit of delayed attribution. So you, if you're having poor performance, you need to give it a little bit of time. It's got to be at least a couple of days after to make a real decision of it's not working or not based on your campaign historics. And then if that ad is working, my first and only rule that I love to live by is if it's working, don't touch it. If it ain't broken, don't fix it, right? So I would, again, I would just probably duplicate it raise the budget so you're starting it out a little bit more fresh. And I know your question could be like, well, isn't there gonna be audience overlap? Not at the spend you're at currently. Now, if you're, if you're currently spending a couple hundred thousand a day or a month, you might have a little bit of overlap, but right now I think you're probably on a couple hundred dollars. Nice. Well, what do you think, uh, am I on point or off? Oh, you're more than on point, brother. You know, I don't argue with you when it comes to Facebook. Come on. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Uh, we'll do a few more questions here, but I want to let you know the other thing that we're doing with this course uh, is we're offering a money back guarantee, basically. So, so this is for we know this is a this will be a sizable purchase for people. We know the value is there. Uh, it's the first course of its kind. Never has so much unique value been put into uh, e-commerce instruction, uh, and no matter what your level, we're going to be able to provide value to you. We're super confident about that. Uh, but we want to know we want you to know that after completing the course. If you've taken the suggested actions, if you've reached out in the private group chat, you've attended the coaching sessions, and you really honestly feel you weren't able to get your money's worth from this project, we want you to know that we will refund your purchase, basically. So that's not something we lead with. Obviously, when you're creating uh, information project, projects, there's so much work that goes into creating them up front. We're not, you know, we're not keen on, on money back guarantees, but we recognize that it's a serious investment for, for everyone uh, here, potentially. And, uh, and that's one of the reasons that we want to make sure that, that we offer that uh, just to be in, in good faith and good standing. Um, so uh, what is a good way to build an audience on Instagram to build buzz around your brand? I remember Greta saying she originated her fifth uh, watches account from flat lay content, which is a, a style of watch, I assume, mm. uh, eventually including her audience in the watch design process. How did you build up that audience in that flat lay niche to begin with? Yeah, that's a really good question. Uh, so there was a few different uh, main strategies, but the two main strategies are um, content and collaboration. So in terms of content, it's identifying viral trending content, not just reposting things that you think your audience might want. So a, you know that your audience is going to be interested in it if it's in like within the same niche as your account. But B, and even more importantly, the way that Instagram's algorithm works is that it works by visual recognition software. And well, that is one component to the algorithm. But basically, they introduce the visual recognition software to begin with uh, to flag things like nudity in imagery and things like that that but now the visual recognition software can actually help to identify viral content that's already been viral on other um, pages within your niche and boost that reach organically because it already knows that that content is outperforming other content so even if you honestly just repost content that is outperforming other content from other accounts or better yet recreate 
a very similar style of that content, then you already know that that's going to perform better on your account. And then my, I guess my main hack there with that is once your post does go viral, uh, making sure that if you're in a growth stage and you're posting viral content only uh, to build up an account maybe before launch, then you want to um, you want to change the caption, so the Instagram caption to include your handle because given any kind of uh, like I guess Instagram activity, you go through your feed, you're scrolling through, you stop and look at a picture and you might look at the caption or the comments as well. So you're not going to necessarily click through to that profile unless you're A, prompted with a call to action or B, that it's a logical progression. So that flow by including your handle in that caption, you're then able to increase the flow of users across to your profile from that viral post to then follow your brand. So that is the way that you leverage that viral content to grow. And then quickly, quickly, I'm going to just touch on collaboration. So in terms of collaboration, there's shout outs and shout outs can either be mutual. So shout out for shout out, trading reach basically. So say you have 1000 followers, someone else has 1000 followers in your niche, you both shout each other out to grow organically off that uh, 1000 following. And then that continues to scale. And so maybe you have 1100, you keep moving up. Uh, another way is paid shout outs. Uh, and these are separate to influencers. Some people call this influencer marketing. It's not influencer marketing. It's paid shout outs on an account. So you'd get an account within your niche that's a vertical account. So say, for example, for Skinny Me Tea, it could be Detox Tips, uh, which is my own account, so you wouldn't have to pay. But if it wasn't, um, then you'd just pay detox tips to promote uh, your account through theirs. So just more of a pay to play model rather than that trade. And then obviously there's influencers. So growing through influencer marketing was definitely like the number one way that we grew our account once we had transitioned across to a branded account. And it sounds like this person has definitely heard my talk at um, the AW conference, which is great. Uh, and so they know that we transitioned a vertical account, which was basically like a niche page account into our fifth watches account. But we did so over time, like you said, um, through like taking them through the entire watch creation process, our transition to becoming a brand ourselves. So yeah, that is how we grew. Uh, Tom wants to know what influencer marketing platform you can recommend, Greta. I imagine there's one on the. <laughs> yeah, I, I, there's one at the tip of my tongue. I can't really remember its name. No, Hey Influencers is my platform. Um, H E Y Influencers, and our website is thisishey.com. Cool. Uh, nice. We just have time for, let's say, one more question here. And this is another technical question. Um, Okay, well, here's one about the course, actually. Let's answer this. I noticed Nick Peroni, Ben Malal, and Nick Shackelford have, a, have different Facebook marketing strategies. How will this all fit in during the course and whether it will be confusing to the beginners? Um, it, I don't, I, this is some, something that I'm too concerned about, and especially the, the way the course is structured with the first three lessons and the second three lessons. So the first lesson, the first lesson is a 10-hour module by Nick where he literally goes over everything you need to know about how to get started. Uh, all the basic mindsets, all the fundamentals, like that course alone will be enough to get you started and get you taking action in the ways that it, it's a real, it's a real, real blueprint for, for how to do things. And then, and then it just basically comes right in with like the technical things you need to understand for how to set up your Facebook campaign. So once you have those first three things mastered, there's, they're not talking about different strategies. They're not talking about, uh, you, you want to do this and then someone else is going to say something totally different. Those first three units are just all about how to get in, get some sales and understand your numbers. And as a holistic piece, it's, it's really, really cohesive in that sense. And then when we get to the more advanced stuff, this is about the ascension mindset, right? So if you're, if you're worried about, you know, the, the things that the, the, the last three lessons talk about not applying to the business you created in the first, that's not necessarily the case. However, as you're building out your business, you're going to want to keep in mind the content of this more advanced stuff so that you can, uh, you know, basically like grow your business in all these other diverse ways, essentially. So it's not like the first three lessons are really designed to be, you know, a cohesive unit on how to get started. And the last three are really designed about 
the ways that you can pour gas on things essentially in order to, to, to really accelerate your growth after the fact. So I don't think there's any risk of it being uh, not cohesive essentially is, is what I would say to that. Um, I know Nick's got a dip here. Uh, Leo, loved your answer, Gunna. That's awesome. Um, let's see. Yeah. I think that's pretty much, I think we pretty much have it covered here. There's one more specific account a question about how much time should you wait to optimize or for the pixel optimi optimization to kick in in a new account? Someone got their ad, uh, Supriya got his ad uh, account suspended, created a new one, but the winning products are not performing that well. How much time should I wait for them to optimize or how much time for pixel optimis optimization on a new account? Any Anything to say about that one? Mo, maybe you can cover that one. <laughs> yeah, sure. I mean, like uh, when you get your, uh, your Facebook ad account, Ban, you technically still have all your data, even if it's not on Facebook, you still have your email list and all that. That's another thing why I always have like two or three ad accounts, run, not running at the same time, but I have two or three different pixels from uh, three ad accounts collecting data, just, you know, something happens. But even though if your ad account still uh, is uh, gets suspended or whatever, you still have the data. And honestly, if I'm starting a new ad account, I will start with retargeting because it's uh, it's like uh, hot traffic. It's not even warm traffic. It's like your buyers and your add to cards. And that should be enough for you to get uh, started. I mean, I don't really wait a lot for the pixel to, uh, to, to optimize. I uh, just start with uh, with uh, with the hot traffic. Like even if I start a new ad account, I will start with the retargeting. I don't know if the echo is coming from me or not, but uh, yeah, you start with the retargeting, and then once that starts perform better, which is suppose if your stuff are on point, you'll be getting like sales day one technically, and uh, that's pretty much it. And then I just flip over to website conversions for cold traffic, and uh, life is good. I I move yes. fast, man. Because again, like my AOV is high, so I just can spend on Facebook without thinking much about it. That's a good position to be in. Uh, this webinar has gone on so long that Nick's AirPods have run out of batteries. And that happened to me on the last one. Nick's got a dip here in just a few minutes, so I want to just cover a few more points here. It's time in the webinar for you to think about what kind of person you are. Uh, whether you are someone who sort of sits on the sidelines, watches opportunities passing by, whether you're able to take the plunge. This guy, I tell you, he cleared those rocks 100%, uh, and, and he is now swimming in the cool, cool waters of success. Uh, and and I, you know, for a lot of years before I took on this role, I was that guy late night, like, like knowing that there was a lot of great things happening in the world, uh, but not, not really being able to act on them, just sort of flipping through channels and not being able to gravitate or grab onto anything. And I, I think it's, you know, now is the time uh, in this opportunity. The getting, you know, to start a dropshipping store in 2014, that's probably, way, if you had a time machine, that's the, that, that, that was the best time to start. Uh, but as they say, the best time to plant a tree was 100 years ago, and the second best time is right now. Uh, and that's really where we are with this opportunity here. Uh, it is, there has never been a better time to, to start an amazing e-commerce business to take the plunge. And that's what this course will do for you at iStack.link slash allstar. Uh, and then essentially, if you look at the price, if you look at if you if you're committed to this journey, like if you're committed to building an incredible business online, this three thousand dollar price point, it works out to eight dollars and twenty one cents a day for a year, uh, which I know a lot of people on this webinar are spending on lattes or uh, or whatever in, 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 on a daily basis. Now, if you were applying that to be part of an exclusive you know, community dedicated to your growth, getting the best possible education you possibly can in the area of e-commerce, it would be worth it, and it is worth it. So we really want you to take us up on this offer at iStack.link slash allstar. I know we've got to uh, bounce out of here. We're up at our two-hour cap, but if you still have questions or you want to work out a different kind of payment option if PayPal doesn't suit you well, uh, email us at team at iStackTraining.com, or you can chat on our intercom bot on iStackTraining.com. Uh, again, the link is iStack.link slash also. I want to thank our webinar guests so much for coming on today uh, and providing that high level insight about how to take businesses to that next level. Uh, I know that they're coming at us from all around the world and uh, uh, it, it means a lot for, for them to be here. So thanks guys. Thanks Greta. Thanks everyone for coming today. Uh, reach out to us at those links and let's do this. This course launches on August 7th. You will not be able to get the course after that. Uh, so make sure, you know, there's going to be, I'm going to do another webinar here, I think, before before this period is over. 
Uh, I'm, I'm really honing it down to a fine science here. Uh, but make sure that during that period you get any questions you have answered and jump on this course because, as we say, there won't be an opportunity like this again. Uh, and I can't wait to uh, take this journey with all of you. So thanks so much. Thanks, panelists. Enjoy thanks. your Friday. Okay. Yeah. Cheers. See everyone. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Okay. Uh, uh.